Hi everyone. I'd like in this video just to wrap up what I've introduced you to over the last videos about receiving and especially as it relates to your design. Now human design is a really good system for bringing this up and making it relevant in the real world. When I first learned about receiving decades ago, three decades ago, it was all very out there, you know, very different and uh, new and not so practical. I mean, we idealised it as a practical thing, but the beauty of human design is that it brings it, like everything else that human design addresses, it brings receiving into the realm of being able to do it practically or being able to accept it and work with it in a practical way and apply it to your practical life. So the first thing we looked at was receiving in the sense of you've got parts of your chart or parts of your makeup as a human being that are defined specifically to do a particular job. And then you've got another part of yourself as a human being, the way you're designed, that is specifically open in order to be receptive. And that, what we looked in the human design chart is the white part. That is receptive to what you're picking up from the world around you from the people, from the environment, from everything that's going on in the world around you. So that brought up the first area. If you're going to do what you're truly designed to do, you can't just analyse it in your mind or think about it. It's got to really fit with who you are and you've really got to have the support and the resources to do it. And one of those places is in the external world, receiving the support of your mother, your father, your, your brothers and sisters, the, the schooling you had, the environment you live in, whatever resources your family had, whatever friends you made, etc., etc., etc. That's receiving the support from the world around you, making money, building a family and a home, um, building a career, um, developing all these things, you know, opening up to what is your purpose and what's your relationship with something greater than us, your spirituality, all of that you get a lot of support from, from the world around you. And where I live in Thailand, that is highly respected. There being a monk in Thailand is very, very high on the social scale. It's a big deal. And when I first came here, I got the impression, well, they'd walk around with their begging bowls and people would, you know, give them food and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. They're put in a situation where the stresses of life are taken away. Remember in one of the videos I said, if you really want to make a fundamental change, you need to be in a low stress environment, in a place where you can really enjoy being yourself, where you've got your fundamental needs taken care of. If you want to get strong in the situation you're stuck in, endure it or work out at the gym, you know, put yourself under stress, it'll make you stronger. But if you want to make the fundamental changes, you need to be in an environment where you're more receptive, where you can receive the support you need to do it. And so the Buddhist monks here are put in a situation where a lot of those stresses are taken away. And they go out to receive what the people give them. But trust me, the people see that as an opportunity to build what they call tambun, you know, to get merit, good luck, you know. It's a, it's a really cool thing to do. It's considered very good form to do that. And then the monks 
through the various things that they do, the lifestyle they live, da 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 da, da are then meant to be the ones in society who support the traditions, but they also support the integrity of the society, and they really can help make breakthroughs. So much so that on television every day, seven thirty in the morning, there's a monk who gets up and gives a three minute, four minute lecture. And I'm quite impressed. The things he says make real good common sense. So this is something that's not like new. What human design does is say that each one of us has a unique way of doing it, not a formalized way. That developed over thousands of years because they recognize the value in being able to receive. But human design says you have a unique way, not only of contributing to the world, but receiving what you need so that you can contribute exactly what it is you're designed to do in the most creative and best way you possibly can. You know? And in other words, make a big breakthrough in that. If you're going to do it, do it really well. So, this is a real breakthrough in terms of receiving support. And the key there is strategy and inner authority because that enables you to decide, to decide what will really support you versus interesting stuff, really good stuff or completely irrelevant or bad stuff for you that doesn't even relate to your design and what you're here to do, letting that go. But there's another level beyond that because I mentioned in one of the videos when you look into your design at a deeper level there's this thing that where you go below the chart below the line and you get into a whole area called variable where they look at color tone base and even what brings us together in terms of dark energy dark matter and various other things that they go into in depth. But what that is, is an ability that life has set you up, built you, not society, life has given you the capacity to tap into the energy you need within you. As it's said in every great spiritual tradition and many practical traditions, what you're looking for is inside of you. So being receptive to that, open to receive that from within yourself is crucial too. And here's what, where strategy and inner authority becomes more than just a practice or something that works, which it does. When you're living from strategy and inner authority, the way you're designed to live, making decisions that way, this thing that I mentioned in one of the videos, the magnetic monopole, the thing that holds us together, that is able to capture and distribute throughout your design the unique energies within you described by colour, tone and base. If you're not living your strategy and you're in authority, you miss that. It just disconnects. As I said earlier, you get distracted. So there's the energy you can receive from within. Now, if you're able to receive that effectively, what that does is two things. It helps you do what you're designed to do at a level of excellence because you're the one designed to do that at that level. You were born for that, you could say, like someone who's born to sing or um, born to play soccer or whatever, you know, born to be a doctor. It just, it comes to you. But also, it lights up your ability to do and that makes you far more attractive and when you're open and lit up, 
you draw this, you not only consciously draw to you things that are good for you, but subconsciously and unconsciously they're attracted as well. Like you don't have to work all day just to make sure it keeps happening. When you're lit up, people are drawn to you. Now just walk down the street in a bad mood and then when you're feeling happy and notice the difference, how people respond to you. It's that obvious. And strategy and inner authority is not something you've got to learn to do it the right way because we said so. When you come back to strategy and inner authority, you unblock your ability to receive from the world around you which opens you up to receiving the support you, support you need rather than you busily working at doing something that you're not supposed to do, blocking that up and confusing everybody around you, including yourself, and pushing away the support you need. But the other thing with strategy and inner authority is it enables you to capture more and more and more effectively the energy that you're receiving from within yourself. It enables your brain and your body to work better. It enables you to perceive and be aware in far more accurate and acute ways that are specific to you. And that's what brings out that excellence. And as you light up, you become more attractive, you receive better opportunities. This is why strategy and inner authority is so incredible, not just to figure it out and do it, but to really experience it to the point where you just know it inside out through experience over time, where you develop distinctions around it that are unique to you and you can see it in other people. It's extraordinary. You know, strategy and inner authority is, oh, yeah, I've got that, I've figured that out, and then, oh, okay, I'll do it, and everything works out. No, it's something that gets deeper and more subtle and more beautiful through experience, not through mental analysis. But the experience takes the burden off your shoulders and your mind, which means your mind operates better. Your awareness, your perception, your body, everything gradually, not in a rush, no, it's not a quick fix. This is living life, like learning to walk it takes time. You've got to practice at it and you can always get better at it. You can always refine your balance. You can always, even when you get older, you can learn to walk slower and, and just be more aware and it never stops. And so strategy and inner authority is not only the key to tune you into what you're designed to do, but it's the key to opening you up to receive the support you need to do what you're designed to do. And to receive that support from the external world and from within yourself. And the beauty of receiving it from within yourself is it makes you more attractive and more, it, it, you just move into different areas seemingly effortlessly in the external world. It just gets you a better result or a better life or better job or better whatever. Not because you figured it out, but because you just, become more and more of the genius, the unique genius that you truly are. So I'm going to leave it at that. I, I hope you've got a glimpse of what's possible there. More than happy to help you at any stage um, when you want to go into this specifically for you and explore it in more depth. Just realise, oh, even in human design, there's this whole shift in lines and colour tone and base from the strategic to the receptive, it's built way more deeply into our design than appears on the surface. It's so important to access that because that will not only drive you, head you in the right direction, 
but make the direction you go in something truly worth experiencing, a life worth living. I'll leave it at that.